Next up, we have David Zip, owner of 3D Mobile Scan, with a presentation on 3D workflows for historical refacading. We've all been to the beach and, and brought uh, buckets with us, and we've built sandcastles. This is the mother of all sandcastles. This is where cast stone got started in Carcassonne, France, and its longevity shows what a remarkable material it is. It's uh, lasted a thousand years. The, the Victorians exported their building style all through the world, including Edmonton. This, this uh, amazing building uh, is a school. It's been restored recently uh, with materials that have been built with modern stone. Um, the Alberta Hotel was recently rebuilt, and this, this was rebuilt with salvaged material from the original hotel. It brings a historical curtain to a part of Jasper Avenue that really benefited from it. We don't have to hold on to the physical. We can uh, digitally capture our remarkable architecture, like West, Glen West Mount School, uh, in my neighborhood. This point cloud gives us a lot of information about surfaces, uh, color, uh, profiles, and with that information we can drive milling machines that can recreate some of the intricate architecture. And once those molds are created, the, the sand mixture can be put into the, uh, into the mold and uh, tamped with power tampers and create cast stone that is stronger than, uh, than stone that comes from quarries. The Molson Brewery site is going to be redeveloped soon, and it has a lot of historical detail on it that can be uh, integrated into the new parts of the building by having digital information about things like the cast stone. On the arena, this is the Dallas Stars Arena. Uh, it's, a, it's a retro design that that incorporates cast stone and fits very well into the rail areas that it's in. Toronto did something similar where they uh, built their arena inside a Art Deco post office. We might do the same thing and give, give ourselves a second chance to have a his, historical fabric by building our detail around some lost buildings like the Tegler building uh, the, the lost post office and some of the lost buildings. If, if it does that, it can be worth a half a billion dollars. The, we should put more, we could put some of these details into the public domain so that they're available for uh, planners and uh, designers and, and builders. They can come from public uh, projects. It, it, why? Because it can give us streets like that are amazing, like White Avenue. White Avenue is a historic street that attracts a lot of young people. It, it, it's the anchor for a lot of our festivals. And why does it do that? Because it gives you a, a sense of being in a special place. Many of the businesses around it have tried to weave into that historical fabric by refacading. For example, this uh, 70s building was refacaded uh, with a cast stone treatment and has better uh, public spaces like the, like the restaurants. Fire and demolition are devastating to historical areas, but by having uh, digital, uh, digitally preserved information, we can recover from that by, and create authentic buildings with authentic materials and, and uh, successful results. This area north of, of Grant McEwen College is an area that will certainly be developed more intensively because of all the students going to that school. The building on the left is a good reference for the warehouse character of that building and could serve as a theme for, for developing that area. Starbucks does an excellent job of looking like they've been part of a community since the 20s. The, this, this building was obviously very well researched and, and the main floor of the building has been built by, rebuilt and, and in a very authentic manner. 
this building in Fort Worth is not a before picture, it's an after picture. It's the Fort Worth contractors of uh, cast stone were able to recreate the Roman soldiers and, and some of the molding around the windows and, and that doorway as well. We try to do the same thing on 104th Street and we, we succeed at it, but uh, it's always easier if you have authentic materials available like the cast stone. It creates the theme. This is, this is the historical area of 124th Street in the area that I live in. There's been a lot of, of City of Edmonton funding towards refacading. The, the, the results have not really resulted in a cohesive look, perhaps by sitting down beforehand and creating a, a look as to what is possible and, and in this case, building new buildings that have historical character and uh, having a little, little bit of decoration like the cast stone around the windows going a long way really creates character. This is a Kroger supermarket in the southern United States that, is, that looks like a, a turn of the century New York fish market. Can Edmonton look back into its historical DNA and capture this kind of public space? I think it can. All we have to do is we have to look at what elements made our history amazing, whether it's lost or it still exists. We have to put it into the public domain, digitally record it, and make it available to architects and builders. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you.